Good morning, everyone. This is Leah, and today we have a special guest here. Hey, it's me, Benili. He is a skincare TikToker, and he worked in the beauty industry just like me, so we have a lot in common. I know, and I'm so happy that you're here in yes. Seoul, and we can finally make a video together. It's been a long time coming. Absolutely. So today, what are we going to film? So we're doing a skincare brand ranking. So we got a list of brands that you guys were all super interested in, and mm -hmm. we're gonna kind of put them into different categories based mm -hmm. on how much we like them, how we like the products, what we think of them after we've tried them, etc. It's gonna be a little bit hard, and are I you I think excited? it's gonna be a lot hard. You probably have some personal relationship with some brands here. Yeah, but <laughs> if I have a personal relationship with a brand, it's always about honesty and authenticity, you know? So you, you can't- That's true. Can't say anything other than the truth. Just looking at the list though, it's gonna be hard to figure out which categories they all go into. So the ranking system there is on the very top tier, it's gonna be God tier. It's the, the brand that we worship, we love, we wouldn't even question. Like when they come out with a new product, we'll instantly buy it. The next on the list would be Ben and Leah approved. We'd I wouldn't it. worship it. It's probably a regular occurrence in my routine. The next on the ranking system is eh, it's it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. <laughs> mm. One or two hit wonders, but the rest of the brand, eh. And then on the fourth ranking is finish and recycle. It was fine. We don't waste. <laughs> so we get to the bottom of the product, but maybe I put it on my body or on, you know, yeah. give a little extra moisture to my or feet or my really hands. Or we wouldn't really repurchase. Exactly. The last on the bottom tier, it would be a hard, hard pass. pass. So Good let's news. get started with the number one brand here. <laughs> <laughs> why is this making me nervous? I don't know why. Let's start with the Korean skincare brands, Casa Rx. Hmm. I would put it in Ben and Leah approved. Mm. I think so too. I think Cosrx definitely is pretty reliable in the sense that it kind of feels like a Paula's Choice in Korea, but mm. then it's much more affordable and it's a product line that you can never go wrong with. It kind of lacks something, but I don't know what that is. I feel like it's, they have so many products, like they come, their catalog is so huge. Mm -hmm. I feel like their products are really good, but I don't have that many products of theirs that like stand out to me. I feel like the only one that stood out to me that much was the Snail Mucin. Oh. The like Snail Mucin 96 Power Essence. Yeah, yeah. Because Cosrx kind of was the biggest Snail Mucin Absolutely. brand for a while. Absolutely. But I think other than that, the rest of the brand is good, but kind of, you know, kind of fades into the background with the rest of the other good <laughs> products that I use. So we'll put that into Ben and Leah approved. 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 <laughs> approved. <laughs> okay, next we have Benton. Ben and Benton. Oh, God tier. <laughs> no question. For me, it's God tier. It's like one of my favorite brands. <laughs> I think for me, it kind of huddles between. Sometimes it's okay. Sometimes mm. I would totally recommend. Mm. And sometimes God tier, like the aloe propolis soothing so gel good. is my holy grail product. So good. Other than that product, I think it's kind of like on the line of approved. Okay. So let's put it in between God tier and the approved. I think that, that I think that that makes sense. What's the biggest differentiator between Benton and Cosrx in your from your perspective? The thing to me about Benton is the formulas are so good and they're really distinctive. Mm. Like Cosrx, it's kind of hard sometimes for me to differentiate. Like, mm. what's different about this product than other good products that I've tried? Right. With Benton, it's like. The Snail V High Content Skin, for example, that yeah. formula is so good. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I don't have any other product that I've ever tried that has that combination of ingredients, that consistency. I feel that way mm -hmm. about the toner. I feel that way about the fermentation essence, the eye cream. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they're able to do it over and over and wow. over again. I love the BHA toner. So good. The BHA so toner good. is good. The aloe soothing propolis yeah. gel is amazing for mm -hmm. summertime especially. The only thing that I'm a little bit kind of like iffy of in terms of the ingredient list is that they use um, natural preservatives. Uh, so they're not uh, using like something that's like truly effective to preserve mm -hmm. the product. So if I open it up, I'll probably put it in the fridge or try to use it as soon as possible. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So the next Korean skincare brand we're, doing, we're gonna talk about is Innisfree. How do we feel about Innisfree? I would put Innisfree in It's Okay. Mm, I think it's, it's kind of similar to Benton in terms of how I feel about the brand because like again, probably more than Cosrx, Innisfree has maybe 300 SKUs for yeah, just skincare so alone. For me, I really love the Green Tea Seed Serum. 
Um, I can't really think of anything else at the moment, but the cleansing oil, the olive cleansing oil is pretty good too. Their lip and eye remover is a cult classic here in Korea too. Yeah. Um, I think it's, the products are pretty reliable. Yeah. Because it's manufactured by a more Pacific, a big company here too. For so. sure. I think the thing, Innisfree for me, when I first started getting into K-beauty, Innisfree mm. was like my one of my gateway brands. Like yeah. for me, like as I've gotten more advanced in yes. my skincare, yes. I've found that I don't find that their products do that much for my skin anymore. Yeah. I get that. So. I think it's a perfect brand for someone who's just starting their for skincare sure. journey. So for let's sure. put it into It's Okay. Next we have Glow Recipe. This is kind of like a K-beauty brand slash an American US-based brand too. Available in Sephora, all over the States. Yeah, I've tried a couple of their products. For me, I personally put Glow Recipe in Finish and Recycle. Wow. I don't well, think well, it- I need to hear more about And this. this is why. I don't think it's a bad brand per se. Mm -hmm. I think that they have a really cool story. I think that the ingredients, a lot of their products actually have Interestingly, because their packaging is super fun, for me, their products just feel like perfume. Mm. They're so strongly scented. Mm. And for like people that watch my channel, you know that my skin doesn't do well with fragrance, yeah. but I also get a headache if my mm. products are too fragrant. So I can't really use their products. But mm. I do think that if you were someone who didn't mind fragrance or yeah. enjoyed fragrance, or they're really good products to use. Skin. Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people like it when their products smell super yeah. good. And I think if you're one of those people, then the nice thing about Glow Recipe is you get that like indulgent, fun experience, but the products are also very effective. I think I probably tried most of their products up to date. For me, Glow Recipe is definitely a really unapologetically fun brand in terms of sensorial experience, giving that beautiful, unique texture. I think Glow Recipe really nails it, and I think mm -hmm. that's probably the biggest differentiator where they're designing the products to be Instagrammable. Exactly. Yeah, so exactly. I think that's where it kind of lacks a charm for me, for someone who's like really advanced in the skincare journey yeah. as well, and someone who wants just like probably simple and effective formula. Um, I think the products are it's okay category. I feel like since it's more of like a really personal preference yeah. that I don't really like the products, yeah. but I think objectively the brand is okay, yeah. I would probably put it in it's okay. Okay. I think. And for those of you that are watching that don't mind fragrance, yeah. Don't mind me and my little sensitive skin over here. <laughs> Next brand that we're going to talk about is Then I Met You. Then I Met You I by Charlotte Cho. Yes. I love their cleansing balm for sure. It's hands down one of the best cleansing balms that I've ever, ever tried. I don't know how you feel about it because you are a little bit sensitive to fragrance. Yeah. I like the cleansing balm, the consistency, yeah. but um, I personally don't like to use polyethylene glycol mm. in my skincare, mm. and that one has it in it, which is the one thing that I don't mm. like about the formula. Mm. But I think if you're not bothered by that ingredient, yeah. I think it's a really good one. I love the cleansing gel. Ooh. And I remember like when the duo came out, everyone was like super hyped up about the cleansing the balm. balm because it was like was the balm, the balm, the balm. And it is amazing, it works super well, but oh my God, I looked at the ingredients list of that cleansing gel and I was, floored. I was so excited to try it. My, so you can favorite. represent the gel and then yeah. I can represent the bomb. I felt like the essence was pretty pricey. Mm. You, it's a pretty expensive product, the essence. Mm. I think it's like $50. Ooh. And um, I didn't really find that the essence did that much for my skin. Right. The packaging is beautiful. Packaging. It's really, really pretty. And I think that's like across the whole brand. The right. whole like blue color is just so nice. Um, and then the gel cream was too light for me because I have mm. dry skin. And I like the honeydew with the lip balm. It's really nice. So, I think overall the product philosophy that Charlotte Cho instills into creating the line is like I would trust her with my skin for sure. For sure. I would put Timmy into Ben and Leah approved. I would put it in Ben and Leah approved too. And to your point, because I used to work for Charlotte, yeah. I was an intern at Soko Glam. That's how I first got into the industry. And I think the whole ethos of the brand is really beautiful. Totally. Approved. Approved. Okay, so moving on to some American brands. First, we have Biosense, the Squalane brand. Yeah. How do we feel about that? Interestingly enough, I tried their Squalane mm -hmm. and some of the products that they were like, I had heard so much about mm -hmm. and I liked them. I thought they were fine, but I didn't, I wasn't like floored by them. Mm -hmm. And then I tried their sunscreen mm -hmm. and it was one of my favorite mineral sunscreens that I've ever tried. I think a lot of the mineral sunscreens can be extremely drying because yeah. the oxide can be an astringent. It absorbs oil. Yeah. So for me, a lot of mineral sunscreens 
dry my skin out but i tried the pipette one because of you yeah. i bought it yeah. <laughs> and it's super nourishing mm -hmm. so i can't wait to try it in um in the middle of the winters yeah. to see how it goes but um an interesting fact is that the parent company of biosans and pipette is the same so oh really biosans actually started as a squalane provider or Ooh. raw material supplier so they are one of the biggest suppliers when it comes to supplying spoliate oil. Parent company is a biotech company. Oh, yeah. I never knew this. So This is so interesting. Yeah, so they decided to launch a brand which became to be Biosans because it's rooted in like such strong like spoliate or yeah. ingredient story. I think more than the brand itself, I like the biotech parent company. More than any other brands in Sephora, Biostance has more credibility to me personally. Mm. Uh, but I think product-wise, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit overpriced too. I think it's overpriced. I don't know if a lot of customers know, but you're paying like 60% to Sephora when you're buying yeah. a product from Sephora. So that's why a lot of Sephora brands have to be a little bit more, more expensive, expensive than just an online brand. But Biosans, let's put it into It's Okay. I think It's Okay is good. Yeah. Next we have Classic Palace Choice. This was hard. Wait, are you a Palace Choice fan? I don't know if I've seen much Palace Choice products on your Instagram well, or TikTok. This is what is so hard about this is <laughs> I love the Palace Choice 2% BHA. It's like one of my ultimate favorite products. And I literally don't like any other products that they have. Mm. I don't recommend any of their other products. I mean, personally. I'm sure the BHA exfoliant is their bread and butter, right? Yeah, it's like what they're most known for. I think their sunscreens are really, really good. Mm. Really, really good. Mm. I don't and like their sunscreens. You don't like their sunscreens? They feel sticky to me. Oh, Because they have a lot of that silicone-y feel. Yeah, it definitely has a lot of mix of dimethicones and a lot, of, yeah. a lot of other silicone oils. In terms of like how iconic the brand is, yeah. I want to put it in like Leah, Ben and Leah approved. But again, I don't know if I have like a really obsessively favorite product. Yeah, I think the other thing for me about Paula's Choice is the ingredients dictionary was such a good resource when I was getting into yes. skincare. And I really appreciated everything that Paula did in terms of like really trying to make sure that the information that was presented about the ingredients was very to the point and yeah. kind of unbiased. I think she did a really good job of unpacking a lot of the misconceptions around clean beauty, mm -hmm. that people were scared of ingredients that they didn't actually need to be afraid of. I like what the brand stands for yeah. and I like the background that it's built on and yeah. the 2%, the BHA is like one of my favorite skincare products of all time. Mm. So I would be comfortable putting it in Ben and Leah approved. <laughs> Even though I don't personally love a lot of their other products. How do you feel about the Unilever acquisition? I always get scared when brands get acquired. acquired by huge companies like that because I feel like it can go one of two ways. I think for me, Paula's Choice has such a strong like product development team in the mm -hmm. early days. Now that I see like new launches, it seems like it's following a trend. Whereas like before, Paula's Choice was creating the trend or was pretty firm and standing in their own ground. And pretty recently, I think the, the first like 20 years was great. But the it's last been 20 years, I think more than 20 years. Oh my god, the last three years ish is probably where they were trying to maximize the company valuation mm. to get sold to another company. They were managed by a private equity fund called TA Associates. The private equity fund's job is to find the next buyers. I don't know if they were truly serving their customers and really thinking about the customer's pain points and mm -hmm. the market white space. And that was a little bit sad to me because it was such an iconic brand and it, like Paula Beacon herself is the OG skin Literally. cleanser. <laughs> She's like the source of so much knowledge. Yes. The nature of these huge conglomerates is they're just formula shared across mm -hmm. all the different brands. And it's really just creating like kind of an illusion of choice for mm -hmm. customers. Yeah, the 2% BHA is all that I use. So as long as that <laughs> stays on the market, I will be happy. <laughs> okay, so we'll put that into Ben and Leah proof for now. Yeah. But I think after Unilever, uh, we'll probably adjust the ranking in like yeah. a year time. We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay, next we have The Ordinary from Desian. How do we feel about this brand? This one's hard. This one is hard because it's true that The Ordinary definitely disrupted the entire beauty industry mm -hmm. and influenced a lot of other brands as well. So I think if there's also a really, really strong pro, there's always going to be a flip side. And I'm a little bit scared that The Ordinary is releasing so many really potent active ingredients which can 
you know, damage your skin barrier. And we're always about the skin barrier here. <laughs> so for me, I would put it in, it's okay. I remember when I first got into skincare back in like 2017, The Ordinary was had a huge moment then. And it was super popular. Everybody was raving about it. The niacinamide and the hyaluronic acid and the yeah. AHA, BHA peel were like yeah. everywhere that you went. And then when TikTok happened in mm. 2020 and it like, like skincare TikTok kind of blew up, The Ordinary had like a whole other resurgence. Right. So for me, I was using The Ordinary when I was first kind of getting into skincare. Mm. And I thought it was super cool that the prices were so reasonable Absolutely. and that it was so easy to try all these different ingredients yeah. and like experiment with how they worked on my skin. But on the flip side, I also had a lot of bad experiences with their products mm -hmm. and the products were so intense. Mm -hmm. So like the first niacinamide product that I used was the ordinary one and it was way too strong for my skin. And I got like really bad breakouts and really bad irritation because mm -hmm. the 10% was so high. That red AHA BHA peel terrifies me. It's like, it's so strong. It's like so much yeah. for people to be using at home. Home. as much as I think it's great that skincare is becoming more accessible yeah I also don't want to drive skincare in the direction of like fast fashion where Absolutely. it's like you always need a different serum and you mm. always need a different product and you constantly have to buy more and more and more and more and more and instead of creating one product mm. that uses 10 great ingredients in the mm. formula mm. create a separate product for each of those 10 ingredients and then you have to go out and you have a glass bottle and a dropper and a box and the strap shipping for like every single one of these products so i think like you said there's pros and there's cons and i think that there's nuance to thinking about the intersection between skincare becoming more accessible yeah. and also skincare being thoughtful mm -hmm. and not like overly consuming products that you don't mm -hmm. need oh you are so eloquent oh, thank you <laughs> but i definitely feel the same way i think it definitely democratized access mm -hmm. to really high efficacious skincare but maybe sometimes it, it is a little bit too high we don't need that much of a high percentage of aha or whatever mm -hmm. but i gotta give props for them being like that kind of trailblazer yeah for sure i think it's okay it's okay it's okay <laughs> next we have a very similar brand called the inky list mm -hmm. How do we feel about this? This one, I actually like more Inky List products than Ordinary products, mm -hmm. but again, I'm not a huge fan of the brand overall. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of compromise with the Inky List in terms of the packaging and the quality of the formulas. Mm -hmm. That being said, I really love their hyaluronic acid. Mm -hmm. is one of my ultimate favorite hyaluronic acids, mm -hmm. and I think it's a great example of an ingredient mm -hmm. that should be cheap. Like hyaluronic acid is not an expensive product to make. And I see these hyaluronic acid serums that are like hundreds of dollars and they're probably like great Dr. products. <coughs> yeah, Dr. Barbara Sturm. <laughs> it's a great serum, but is it worth $300? Definitely not. The hyaluronic acid I like and the caffeine eye cream, mm. I also really like. For me, the Inky List is a hit or miss too. I think mm. some formulas are beautiful. For me, I love the caffeine eye cream and polyglutamic acid and CoQ10 was beautiful. I actually surprisingly like the retinol product. I'm very neutral about the Inky List. Mm. I think sometimes when I go to the raw material ingredient like supplier exhibition, like I would see the exact same formula from a lot of the labs. So, and that's their strategy, right? Like, and that's why I think the formula is very inconsistent across the board. Because one formula can come from a lab A, another can come from lab B, and they don't take it and tweak it. They kind of like just package it in the inky list and then launch it. That makes sense. I would put it in like, it's okay. Yeah. In the sense of like, there's a couple products that I really like, and then there's the rest of the products are not bad, but not my favorite. Then let's put it in the approved category. Okay. Because we put the ordinary in it, it's okay, right? Yeah. Okay, next we have another brand called Naturium. Uh, Naturium is kind of tricky for me because I have really sensitive skin. Their products I think are really beautiful, but sometimes a, there's a little too much going on in them. Mm. But there are a couple of Naturium products that I've tried and that I really, really love. The idea and the concept behind the brand is really cool. So mm. I'm a fan. I don't think they're bad products. I just think that for people with sensitive skin, mm. there's a little, there's a lot of risk factors. If we group the Ordinary the Inculus Naturium all together, I think Naturium has by far the best like superior formulation yeah. the consistency is beautiful and vitamin c serum is absolutely like for it, sure it has a very stunning texture i think their retinol products are good their mm -hmm. oil their plant oils like the singular plant oils are also pretty great in terms of the quality mm -hmm. i would put it into ben and leah approved 
I would put it into it's okay, but Ooh. I would be comfortable with it being in approved. Should we put it in between? Yeah, let's put it in between. Okay, let's put it in between. Uh, next, we have another Target brand. Okay. Uh-huh. Versed skincare. What have you tried from the brand? From Versed, well, the ones that I like from Versed are the Baby Cheeks, the Coconut Water Toner, I think it's, it's like Coconut Ooh. Toner. And uh, they have a retinol that's the- Yeah, um, Press Restart. Press Restart. <laughs> or is it Press Reset? That's, I can't remember. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> press Restart and I tried one of their cleansers. Mm. But I like Versed, similar in terms of like, I like the accessibility of the pricing, yeah. but I actually like Versed formulas and ingredients more than I like the Ordinary Nike List. I really like what the brand is doing. Um, I don't know much about Catherine Power, who's the founder and CEO of Verse, but I do know like the president of Verse, who actually runs the entire operations, does the product development and the marketing. And she has so much passion for the brand itself, like her own baby. And I think she puts a lot of passion into their sustainability initiative as well. I think in terms of like sustainability, I definitely love reading what the verse is doing and staying in the know. In terms of products, my favorite was actually the Guards Up mineral sunscreen and you hated that. Oh yeah, I really didn't like Guards Up. <laughs> I told which you, right? disappointed me because I was super excited about it, but I really didn't like it. But. I think I would definitely proudly recommend Verse skincare products to like a high teen, someone who's For just sure. starting their skincare brand. For sure. It's definitely more interesting than any other drugstore brands for yeah. sure, but at the same price tag. Yeah, so we'll put that into Ben and Lee approved. 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 <laughs> we just realized that there's no brand so far in God tier. tier. Do we have a problem? Are we too critical? Well, the thing for me is that Crave is God <laughs> tier, but I know that you're not gonna wanna put that in the video because it's gonna seem self-fulfilling. But Ben be Neely biased. thinks that Crave is God tier. <laughs> Next, we have another TikTok viral brand. Uh, Can you guess what it is? It is... CeraVe. It kind of resurged in the TikTok days. I think CeraVe was another brand, kind of like The Ordinary, mm-hmm. that threw the whole industry for a loop. In The Ordinary, as much as it aimed to be like, you know, a, a rejection of what skincare was, it was still super skincare and mm-hmm. fun. And like, there was a brand experience that you yeah, had. CeraVe, like <laughs> there's no brand experience. Like you just pick it up randomly at your drugstore. It's like the little thing you'd get the sachets from your dermatologist as a sample. Like the packaging is super plain, but it had this huge boom and people loved it. Yeah. And so I think it kind of shocked the industry. I think For it sure. shocked CeraVe too, so. It's a L'Oreal brand, right? It is, yeah. And I worked with a lot of people from CeraVe when I worked at L'Oreal and it's a great people behind the brand. They're a dermatologist brand and they're distributed through derms and also through like Mm -hmm. they're detailed in derms and they're distributed through drugstore. Mm -hmm. And so for them to be the social media phenomenon brand, I think was a surprise to everyone, including them. I I love the no frills, like no brand experience, just really focused on creating safe products, especially Mm -hmm. for someone who goes to dermatologists to get their skin fixed. I think CeraVe is a very safe brand Uh, compared to Aveeno and Cetaphil, I would definitely pick CeraVe from the drugstore aisle if I don't have any other options to go to like Sephora or shop online. But um, the products are, in terms of like the experience, texture, it's very underwhelming. Mm. I don't think I have a need to use CeraVe when there are superior formulations out there. Yeah. So for that reason, I think it's just okay. Or I would finish and recycle to be honest. Yeah. The products are just underwhelming to me. The cleansers, I was really surprised Mm -hmm. because I heard so much about how good the cleansers were and how much they were changing people's skin. For me, I actually found them to be kind of drying and stripping. And I think part of the reason is because I was approaching CeraVe with like years of being in the skincare world. I've tried all these different cleansers, milk, jelly, gel, like all these different consistencies. So to me, the plain foaming cleanser felt kind of harsh and stripping on my skin. I would choose it over Cetaphil. Um, I would not choose it over Vanny Cream. For me, when I'm looking at these kind of drugstore brands, I am thinking, okay, really simple, really plain, just like to the basics. And Vanny Cream is so good for sensitive skin. So for me, it would be my choice. But I think from the safety perspective, CeraVe is a derm brand, derms love it. Who's actually approving this? Is it some random person that has no idea what they're talking about? Or is it, you know, a derm that's actually talking about the product? I would say use and recycle. Finish and and recycle. recycle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next we have I Do Care. It's a Korean skincare brand made by Mimi Box yeah. team. 
Um, it's a very fun looking brand that has a lot of glitters and unnecessary <laughs> pigments and, and fragrance. Unnecessary <laughs> fragrance, like loads of it. So, so much fragrance. I did use their products uh -huh. because they were gifted and it's something that I would probably use it on my body. I don't like I Do Care at all because it's so fragrant. I'm super sensitive to fragrance and it's to the point where even if they formulated it in some way that the fragrance didn't irritate my skin, mm -hmm. I get like a headache. It's something that I would find in like a party favor bag, yeah. not something that I would like. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm not a fan. I think it's more the vibe that I Do Care gives me is like probably a more affordable version of Glam Glow. What do you think? Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, I like that. That's a yeah. good way to put it. I would put it in a hard pass. Yes, hard pass <laughs> for sure. Okay, next we're gonna talk about another drugstore brand. Neutrogena. Neutrogena. Yeah. Okay, this, is, this was such a phase yeah. in our teenage days. It was. It, it I don't know out. who was in the marketing department at Neutrogena that made everybody literally think that Neutrogena was like, really good stuff like i remember when i would go to someone's apartment or something like house or something and they'd have neutrogena i'd be like oh you're using the good stuff i don't think that now but i think growing up they really had a grip on the like american public For that sure. made them think that neutrogena wow. was like top tier they didn't yeah. be the the grapefruit acne wash was terribly yeah. stripping horrible and because I had acne too growing up. So mm -hmm. I tried all of their acne products, all stripping, all drying. So I think Neutrogena for me is a hard pass. I think their sunscreens are, I'm sure they're gonna be really effective. Yeah. But I don't wanna apply it on my, on my skin, on my body. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And um, the thing for me with Neutrogena is I used it for a long time and I did genuinely think it was really good when I was in high school because I was really feeding into the whole like marketing I guess behind it but it was because I didn't understand what good skincare was supposed to feel like so mm -hmm. I used the pink grapefruit acne wash because I had really bad acne and I loved it because it made my skin feel super dry and tight yeah. and I thought that it was getting rid of all that excess oil and it was yeah. gonna make my breakout so much better I'm really not a fan hard, hard pass, pass. Yeah. okay last but not least or actually last but the it, least definitely least <laughs> we have St. Ives on the floor I love St. Ives. It's my favorite. <laughs> I was like, wait, did I not look at Ben's TikTok enough? <laughs> hard pass. A hard pass. I think if I were to use St. Ives, it would be to exfoliate my feet after like a long day of hiking because it's really harsh and I could probably really get in there. It's too hard on the skin. I think the same thing, I did use St. Ives when I was in high school when I was mm. thinking like, Oh, if I scrub my skin hard enough, it'll get better. Strong. I so. mean, they really did the marketing well. Like, mm -hmm. Everyone in America knows about St. Ives yeah. apricot scrub. Yeah, that is a hard pass hard for me. Pass. <laughs> so that concludes our skincare brand ranking. Yes. I hope you guys enjoyed. This was a blast, but we it's just so recognized fun. there's no brand in God tier. Okay, well, I think <laughs> there are two brands in God tier, okay. Benton and Crave. Okay. But I know she doesn't want to put Crave in the video. It has to be earned or created by you. <laughs> Please go ahead and subscribe and like the video that we also filmed on Ben's channel. What yes. is it about? So we filmed the top five products of 2021 so far. So Ooh. we got to talk about brands here and there we can talk about some of the actual products that we're loving. So it's a really great video. So make sure to check it out. Thank you so much, yeah, Ben, for being you. on my channel. This was Long so much fun. Coming. Thanks um, for having me. Awesome. Bye, guys. Bye.